I'm in London today testing out the 5G from O2. Specifically, I came here to test the 5G from the vendors Nokia, which makes up most of London, and Huawei, which O2 use in the city of London, so the very banking part of London. So let's get testing. We start our testing right in the heart of the city of London, Leidenhall Street which is one of the key homes of the UK's financial services sector. This location is also served by a top of the range Huawei 4G and 5G site for O2, which is Huawei Massive MIMO 5G using the active antenna on the left. Now, performance wise, this site was absolutely superb with sustained 5G ENDC downlink throughput in excess of 400 megabits per second. The highest I observed tipped the scales at over 460 megabits per second, which is a very nice number for the centre of the city of London. In addition, Thanks to the flagship Huawei 46S 4G capacity solution deployed on this site, 4G performance was also excellent, being typically between 50 and 150 megabits per second. Considering that most of the data demand and load on the network in this area will be on 4G, that really is quite something. We have now headed west past Bank to this area, which is also incredibly busy, specifically testing the site on Aldermary House, which is a Huawei 88R O2 5G site. This is also 46S 4G, and in the summer, myself, Jake, Chris, and some others found some very nice 4G performance of it. But anyway, Going to this 5G test, this site was once again sustaining over 400 megabits per second downlink throughput with peaks getting into around about 450 megabits per second. While in the city of London, I also tested a range of other O2 Huawei sites, such as near Bank Station and around that area. These also performed very, very well. Notably with these O2 Huawei 5G sites, which explained their superb performance, is that they were doing four layers of NR, which therefore enables really high throughput to each device, as well as supporting multiple beams on each sector as well, which is great for capacity and is one of the main reasons actually for doing really high order MIMO, especially like massive MIMO in the first mast example that we saw. So really the Huawei 5G deployment felt amazing to be honest. It just worked. You would get into 5G coverage and it would be really fast consistently and it just worked perfectly. It was really actually very pleasing, especially so soon after launch. It's now time to talk about O2 Nokia 5G. And for this, I have moved into Chancery Lane, where there is the first of our O2 Nokia 5G sites. Now, performance from this Nokia 5G site was quite variable. So in good conditions off one of the sectors, performance was pretty excellent, achieving around 250 megabits per second on NR and actually getting scheduled surprisingly high, roughly 100 megabits per second off the 4G side of ENDC, leading to a total of about 350 megabits per second, which is actually very reasonable. 4G performance alone was also very good, exceeding the 200 megabits per second mark. However, on another sector, in fact, the sector facing me on the establishing shot, things weren't quite so nice. So there was a very high bit error rate and a very low reported SINR, 
which led to connection drops and detaches quite reasonably but it was just very odd that that was happening fortunately just down the road was another o2 nokia 5g site and this one was behaving quite well with nr throughputs of over 200 megabits per second but sadly this one wasn't scheduling much on the 4g side of things so the peaks were just over 200 megabits per second on a technical level these o2 nokia 5g sites were built as 88r however in contrast to the huawei 88r sites these Nokia ones were only doing two layers of NR and also were only emitting a single beam per sector. Today I'm in Leeds city centre testing out O2's 5G here in this city, which is using the Ericsson vendor, including their massive MIMO Air 6488 as well as their 88R deployments. The O2 Ericsson massive MIMO 5G sites typically delivered between around about 100 and 250 megabits per second aggregate downlink across the LTE and NR components. Although most of this was generally coming off the NR side because like we've seen before, generally when NR was there, there was little to no throughput scheduled over 4G. However, these sites were pretty consistent by and large and behaved quite well. The one O2 Ericsson 88R 5G site in Leeds that I tested was a bit strange. It was only using 20 megahertz on NR and performance was quite low. So generally 20 to 30 megabits per second from NR and not much more from the overall throughput it, it was that was, it was just a strange strange site 4g performance alone was absolutely superb once again across these ericsson sites often exceeding around about 200 megabits per second on a technical level the massive mimo ericsson site were doing four layers but only one beam and the 88R site was doing two layers and one beam per sector. Thanks for watching this O2 5G testing video across their three 5G vendors. It's quite unusual for a network to have three vendors and especially for a network to have three 5G vendors at this point. So it was quite an interesting test and it will be very interesting to see how all these vendors evolve over time because I'm sure that there's a lot left to see from all of them.